Hey y'all, Chemology here for another Chemology exhibit. What that means is I have been doing these videos for 22, three days now. Ugh, I need to start like looking at this stuff before I get on here because as much as I'm trying to do this on the fly, as much as I am doing this on the fly, meaning I am purposely not editing and having some big plan every time I sit down and do this, it is still one of those things that bothers me like I think I should be because it's the way I've always done it and I think the way that I've always done it has really limited I have limited myself by being that way and there were great things that came out of it but anyway doing it that way would make me would make it such that I would have less of this so I have been not doing that but having big feelings about it like you should be more organized or you need to be more organized you need to have more plan or be more ready or more facts checked. And if that's the kind of thing that irritates you, homie, I, homie, I was gonna say girlfriend, but if you're a guy watching this, then that would not work, right? So, uh, friend, hey you, that things like that, that was me too. Like that shit actually bothers me. So I'm trying to figure it out, figuring it out. What was I looking for? What episode? What ex exhibit? I keep also, like, I have decided I want to call it exhibit, but sometimes I still slip and say episode. I want it to be exhibit. Duck, please stop. Ah, ah. Thank you. Appreciate that. This is exhibit 23. Thank you for waiting this long. We're a minute and 45 seconds in and I have said nothing, which I don't like either. So, wait. Thank you for being here, waiting. Today's topic, I would like to, let's just skip the prerequisite, like why am I here, what am I doing? The topic that I wanna talk about today is morning ritual, morning ritual, morning routine. Something that I have spent much time and energy, significant thought and practice in. I have, I would say I have a pretty strong morning ritual and whatever the hell that means to each of us. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. And someone recently asked me about it and it's actually one of the things I get asked about the most. So I am on the fly going to think it out loud and remember what I, what, remember what I can and share it with you. I think it started with trying to meditate. I was going, there was a year plus that I was going to a lot of Tony Robbins stuff and I think what led me there was because I was really into a growth space and that is something I was attracted to. And if you've listened to my other work, you know that I believe in attraction. I didn't know it then. That's something I figured out now. But I believe that anything that you're attracted to, there's something there for you. So back then, before I had that framework articulated for myself, I was just like trying on stuff, which is what I think a lot of people do until they figure it out and then integrate it and then figure out what's really theirs. And my observation of what happens in a lot of those spaces and most of my experiences around the Tony Robbins space is that people do the first part, like they're attracted so they go and then they work and they learn and then they maybe keep going for a while. Some keep going maybe forever, I'm not sure. But what I eventually was a big turnoff for me in that space was I felt, I judged, I perceived that people were like regurgitating stuff, but hadn't really integrated it. So you'd be around hundreds or thousands of people, all of them saying the same shit. And at first that feels great because when you're new and you're in that space, you're thinking, oh, this is interesting. And now I'm around like-minded folks. And, but at a certain point, it actually started to feel to me like everybody was just repeating the shit that they heard and weren't practicing it or weren't hadn't really critically thought about it and it became a big turnoff actually and so the reason I think I just went on that Tony Robbins tangent was because I was there I was picking up stuff and one of the things that he suggests is priming which I I would paraphrase as his version of meditation and so when you go to those things there's like hundreds if not a thousand things that you could do you're supposed to do all this stuff you go home and you do this and you do that and you focus on this and you change that and all this stuff and it can be very overwhelming and in that environment he actually speaks to that which is pretty great because I don't think a lot of 
seminars or places, things like that do that, at least not the ones I've been to. So it was nice to have someone acknowledge, like, I just gave you a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be impossible to implement all at once. So here's some strategy for that. And what I took away out of that was pick one thing. And whatever seminar it was, out of however many I'd gone to at that point, I went home and said, I'm going to do this meditation thing every day. And I found his video online and I did it um, every day, probably for 30 days. I don't think I actually considered it a 30 day challenge at the time, but I had done 30 day challenges before then. So I'm sure I was, if I hadn't considered it official, which is an important part to me, I was using that stuff to keep myself with it. And then some point along the line, I started, I was doing it, listening to it. So every morning I got up and that was what I was doing. So his voice in my head, me following the prompts, you know, getting better and better or becoming more and more familiar with it. And at a certain point, I was like, I think after, if you're really doing the work, or at least what I would consider the work, you all, in addition to what you resonate with, the more familiar or the more you practice, you also become familiar with what you disresonate with what you don't like, what doesn't feel right, what's not you. And I think that that's actually where the gold is. I mean, what a, what a weird meaning like saying to say really like where the gold is, but it takes first being attracted to something to get you there. But if you just stay there and you don't start to like question it or deconstruct it or challenge it or make it your own in some way, not that everything has to become your own. Like you could use something that as is forever. Um, but I do think there's something in there. And I was like, I really don't like that part or that part kind of bothers me or that word I really don't like, you know, I'm, I'm big on words. So there were some words and then eventually I started, I lumped a perspective that I was developing into, I felt Tony Robbins was very masculine. Makes sense. He's a guy, masculine energy, not a problem. But I was a I was starting to understand myself as a feminine energy because I actually went into that space thinking I was definitely a masculine and started to explore like maybe I'm not I maybe I'm feminine I just have been putting on or using a masculine energy for so long for lots of great reasons but anyway lots of stuff in the meditation that I ended up not starting to not like and so that's when I was like make your own version and so I straight up like wrote out a whole thing kind of based on like what he was doing which was set some intentions, doing some breath work with some movements and stuff, which makes no sense to you unless you've ever done Tony Robbins event or this meditation video, which I'll go ahead and link it in here so you can have some context. The point though is I used his as a starting point for mine. And I, this is another big part of my work is like, if there is something that exists, use it like use it as a starting point from scratch and blank canvas and all that is great in lots of ways and it's also it also can be very challenging and not great in lots of ways because if you have nothing to start with it's like recreating the wheel and all the phrases that go up with that why would you recreate the wheel when there's a wheel that exists make the existing wheel better make the existing wheel work for you versus like going and cutting down a tree and making a new wheel that works for some folks but for me I tend to be a person who likes to have something to start with and that actually that reminds me of a conversation I had this morning which was an insight about myself about whether it's food or a piece of art or something else. I am not a from scratch person. I love to like find something that's not going to be used or thrown away or is going bad that needs to be used and use that and that's my like creative de departure. It seems specific that it's like that. So. Anyway, made my own version, I wrote it out, and then I recorded myself saying it so that once I was in this meditation space that I'd already created this practice for, like wake up, do this thing. I literally, that it, I, I, as I was doing it, I picked out little rules for myself. And maybe this is where rules became a thing that weren't edgy for me, or maybe rules were never a problem for me. I like rules. Some people, when you say a rule, are like, rules are meant to be broken, and rules are like some shit that doesn't work for them. But for me, rules is a great thing. Rules gives me definition, clarity, clear stuff to work with. Like I love that. And often I think that making your own rules is a very powerful thing. So in the beginning of the morning ritual stuff, it would be like, my rule would be when you wake up, get up. That'd be the first thing because I had this whole thing I called dread roll. 
the alarm would go off and that was back when I was still doing alarms. I do have been doing natural wake up for maybe a decade now. I mean, it's been a long time, but I would wake up, hit snooze, roll over. My heart would start doing the palpitation thing because I would have anxiety. I would start thinking about what I had to do for the day whose email I hadn't responded to, who I was nervous to talk to, what problem was going on in the office, da 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 da, right? And I would roll over and never, you never get back to sleep after that first wake up, right? Like that's what I call the dread roll. So one of my first rules was, as soon as you wake up, get up, wake up, get up. And then instead of checking my phone, because that was what I, I would like check for email and like try to respond to stuff right away or know what was coming. I had all these great reasons why checking it was good. And it wasn't just work email. I would also do Facebook and Instagram at certain, I think I must have, I think I have. It's been so long ago that sometimes it feels like I've never done that stuff because I've for so long, I don't do that anymore. And it's just alien at a certain point. And I know that I did it. So, I, it was wake up, get up, and I would literally like sit up from my laying down position, put my feet on the ground, and I would get ready for my meditation part. And part of that is you can do a seated meditation. I mean, this was part of the whole, the way it was, this whole, like I started with something and made it my own. And you also did this arm pump thing. Excuse me one second, Duter's calling. You got what you need. Can you drink? So I would literally sit up from my laying down position, put my feet on the floor and get ready for this arm pump thing that was part of the, the meditation. And I would do that and I would not look at my phone, would not pick up my phone, even wouldn't, I wouldn't even check messages. Like I just made the rule and it was very hard at first because you're thinking, well, what if my boss texted me or what if my, a coworker texted me? You I mean, if you're the manager of a place, you're often on call with people and you can't ignore a text message. Like someone's calling into work, you can't not get that text message or whatever it is, like whatever little fire might be starting right away. I get it, don't, don't think I don't get it. I, I was there and I'm not diminishing that your role might be more important than mine. And I stand by, it can wait, it really can. There is a way that you can create this space to have energy for yourself before you have energy for other people. And that became how I, convinced myself that it was worth it because I basically, I, it, the, the um, refined saying is now, no one gets my energy before I do. And it took a lot to get there, but that came from places of like, it's not possible to be selfish. And when I say things aren't possible, I guess what I really mean is that it's not a bad thing. It's not possible for it to be a bad thing. And all these ways that I like to debunk common sayings like, I say there's no such thing as two, there's no such thing as obvious, there's no such thing as selfish. What I really mean is it's not bad. All these things have bad raps and it's not bad. So the thought behind that was if it's not possible, how to, how to consider the possibility that it's not possible to be selfish. If you can debunk that for yourself, like it's not selfish because if I'm answering the text before I have gotten myself, whatever you want to call it, centered, grounded, oriented, energized. If you haven't done that first, what kind of person are you showing up to in any moment? I'm going to pause this. If you've seen some of my other stuff, you know that Deuter has a call and he was calling. So I just went to uh, help him with something that he might want, which we went potty. So not selfish, no one gets your energy before you do, waking up and getting up. They were all little rules that I used for myself. So not getting on my phone became very easy once my why about it got really strong. And it took a good bit of effort to get to that point because I, I mean, trust me, I went through all the things like, don't trust me, listen and then figure it for yourself. I don't like when someone's like, trust me on this. Do your own thinking. This is what I did. It, I was worried about what if someone called and was an emergency? Like what if my mom needed something or your kid needs something or you can't miss those kinds of calls, right? 
and I worked on that like th that would probably be another topic if that's your concern reach out I'll do another topic or maybe I'll just do it so I worked on that and figured that out for myself it wasn't that I didn't and didn't and working it out didn't become I don't care or I'm not worried about that or I think that's not possible those weren't my answers I worked it out in a way that made it that I thought that it was good and right and comfortable for me to put my phone on do not disturb or whatever it is so if that's you reach out or I might just cover it there was that there was also the well I'm a leader in this organization I can't not respond to something right away work that out too and it didn't have anything to do with I don't care or it can wait and that kind of stuff in any simple terms that I think that you can't figure it out for yourself too. Um, lots of stuff, like a lot of stuff comes up. So I'm not saying it's not hard. And I'm saying if you figure out your why and you get really connected and you do the work on all the little things that come up, it gets really possible. And it's a really great place to be when you wake up and you have a little, little thing or a couple little things that you do that really set you up for a great day like you it could be a lot of things it could be that you set some intentions meaning these are the words I'm going to focus on my words or intentions would change based on what I was doing in the day if I was going to go see my mom that day a lot of times one of my intentions would have to do with that if I was going to work a gig some way I worked at a bar for a while if I if that was my thing that I was a big part of my day some of my intentions would be around that like show appreciation to every person or whatever it was and it's also a time where you can commit and create some consistency to goals or I really don't like the word goals. That's why I did the whole thing um, or intentions or desires. Those were things that resonate for me. So you can get into the space where you're repeating, bringing consistency to things that are important. And I mean, at one point, for instance, my morning ritual was like three hours long. As soon as I say that, you might be like, well, this girl's a quack. No one can afford, th no, no one with a real job can afford three hours in a day. I'm not even preaching three hours a day, girlfriend, boyfriend, homie. I'm just saying, if you set yourself up, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, three hours, it varies day to day, the time set yourself up consider it as a time that you set yourself up no one gets your energy before you do because if you give your energy out before you get your energy you're not giving out great energy you're not like if you wake up and you start and you're irritated or anxious or whatever those kinds of feelings are which i think we would all agree are not ideal feelings create some ideal feelings for yourself set some some, some perspectives stay the fuck off your phone <laughs> If you need to hear that, I'll do a little short clip about it. Because when you get on, maybe that's what you should explore is like, what does it do to you when you do that, when you get on your phone? So if I wake up and I start, I've just woke up my eyes and I'm already thinking like the dog needs to go out or my partner needs this or today I'm doing that. And then I slow down and I'm like, okay, wake up in love. And that is even so, that actually is currently kind of a challenge for me because wake up in love came from a time and things that were going on that sometimes it doesn't resonate anymore. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not sure love is the most important thing. And you might be on their side of the screen being like, girls quack again, because love is definitely the most important thing. I'm not saying love's not important. I'm just saying, I'm not sure it's my most important thing anymore. And whatever it is, though, I woke up and you hear the bell, someone else needs something. This is how my life has been recently. It's tough. Like, and I'm preaching about this morning ritual stuff and I'm actually having a real hard time with anxiety. So give me one more minute. I'm gonna let out the other dog who rang the bell because he's real smart. He rings the bell to go out. I will be right back. And with the cool technology of editing, you probably didn't even need to know that I just did that because I hit pause. You didn't see that I went over there and did that thing. And again, I'm, I'm here, I'm doing this in a way that makes it that I don't feel like I, I'm, I'm gonna make it perfect. I'm just trying to let people see how I think and what the reality is and then not this like perfectly curated and edited fancy video sesh go to Ali Abdal and your gym guy what whoever I don't even know a lot I mean I know Ali Abdal does some good stuff but go to those guys if that's what you want I ain't your girl morning ritual figure out why it's important to you stay the fuck off your phone right away that was where I was at when you open your eyes and you're already thinking about your stuff if you open Instagram right away and you see something upsetting, one of my girlfriends actually told me that she got off Instagram because the, the algorithm or whatever it was 
she had had a miscarriage and um, <clears throat> it was showing her a lot of pretty grotesque miscarriage stuff. And she was like, at that point, she didn't want to see it anymore and didn't know how to change like what Instagram thought she wanted to see. So she got off for that reason. But if you're looking at stuff that you're not, that was a, a significant or severe example. But if you're looking at stuff that you're not super conscious of, you're looking at that maybe not the way you want to start your day and then you open your phone and like now Instagram's telling you what to think about or Facebook or if you watch the news and subscribe to your news app or your email and so-and-so is mad at the other staff person. Now that's what you're starting your day with. Just think about that. I mean, I know when I say that, that I heard that before and I was like, yeah, okay, it doesn't sound great, but sometimes you got to hear things differently and a, diff a different number of times before it hits different. And that's what I think about a lot of this stuff because you could have told me that one year, three year, five year, however many years ago, and I've been like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, man, but I still need to check my email or whatever it is. And now it's different. It's, it really hits. It's like, if I start my day that way, my whole day starts with Sally being mad at Sue or whatever the fuck it is, you know? And that's not what I want my life to be about. <laughs> I don't really care that much about Sally and Sue, you know? I mean, I care about them and ultimately I care the most about me and that I'm showing up in my life and to the people that I have chosen to have in my life. And I want to be the best version of that. I don't want to be a bad version. And this is a soft spot for me right now because I don't feel like I'm a great version right now. My morning rituals are very interrupted. I have a sick, dying dog who calls for me about every... 